Morning guys. Okay, I just wanted to walk you through my uh, reverse osmosis system here for removing water from maple sap before we boil. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just run through the system uh, quickly, just show you uh, what's going on basically, and then we'll go through each individual part uh, if you want to build this thing yourself. Um, so basically what this thing is doing is it's using a 4040 reverse osmosis membrane there and it's uh it's basically taking pure water out of the tree sap so you end up with pure water in this tank and then concentrated sap in this tank uh it comes out of that hose and then or sorry uh, in that hose and out the bottom and it just keeps recirculating through the system um so basically we take this tank here from the sugar bush it comes either full or we started here at 710 liters and our goal today is to take it down to 284 liters, which, is, which means we're taking out approximately 60% of the uh, water, which is huge. That's a huge fuel savings, whether you're using wood or oil in your evaporator. Um, and has no effect on the, on the final product. So what I have here is a valve on the bottom of my tank. And that just changes it to a sort of a garden hose size from this IBC tote. And the hose goes across the ground and into this uh, Wayne. It's a half horsepower sort of transfer pump. Pretty common. You get it at any hardware store. You don't necessarily have to use this one. You just need a transfer pump that's able to pump water um, and, it, and hopefully pump it up to 40, 50, 60 psi, that type of thing. Uh, so then it exits this pump, goes into this braided line up here and feeds into one side of this uh, house water filter. So all this is is just a typical home water filter. You can get at any hardware store. And it's just taking all the particles and debris and uh, larger stuff out of the sap before it heads over to, this, to the RO membrane. Just makes your RO membrane last longer. Uh, so I've got a one micron filter in here. Then on the outlet, I've got a pressure gauge. And this just allows me to make sure that I do have pressure going to my high pressure pump, which you'll see in a second. Um, so I just keep it about 40 PSI there. And that's what this pump is able to keep it at after it goes through that filter. So from there, we come down through this braided hose here. And into this Procon high pressure pump. So what this pump does here and uh, I'll list the part numbers of all these in the description to make it a little easier to find. But basically this is a Procon, uh, I think 330 gallon per hour high pressure uh, water pump. So it's this little brass thing and it uses this 56, this right here, this is a 56C motor, uh, motor mount, I guess you could call it. It's what allows you to connect um, a device to a electric motor. And then inside there's a coupling um, that's attaching the motor to the pump. So all these parts I will list. And then I have it hooked to a 1.5 horsepower. Uh, I have, I'm running it on 240, but you can run it on uh, 110. So I'm running on a 240. This is just a pump I got at Princess Auto. Very common uh, style of electric motor. Um, so the sap coming in from the filter is now being pressurized by this pump up to 300 psi however we're not running it at that pressure we're running it at 200 just to keep the system a little bit lower so it pressurizes it and this pump here needs to be fed with sap it can't suck so that's why you need this pump here to feed this pump so it pressurizes it goes through this high pressure braided line here into the into the 4040 membrane housing the sap then flows up the outside so inside this uh, membrane housing is an actual ro membrane so when the sap enters it's flowing on the outside of the membrane and is essentially trying to get out of this outlet right here because this is connected to the outside of the membrane. So between the membrane and this steel housing. And it flows through this valve, out this hose, and in back into the top of the tank. And that's how you have, get concentrated sap. However, 
before that happens, you need to increase the pressure on the membrane so that you start forcing the sap through the membrane so that it goes into the middle of the membrane and pure water starts coming out of this tube here. So I increase the pressure with this little gate valve. So I run it at 200. And so what's that, what that's doing is, it's like I said, it's forcing the sap through the membrane and then we have pure water coming out of this hose into this tank. And I keep about a 50 gallon tank of this stuff because I use it afterwards to back flush or just flush my system uh, to get any sugar molecules uh, or any debris off of the membrane. So basically the startup procedure uh, with this thing, uh, actually I can just show you that right now. What I'll do is I will open up the gate valve here. So when I open up the gate valve, basically I'm letting unrestricted flow flow through here and no water is coming out of the out of the middle of the membrane because it isn't being forced through. So I'll shut my high pressure pump off here and then I shut my low pressure pump off. So to the startup procedure, obviously you want water going to your pump. The first thing you're going to want to do is turn on your low pressure pump because you, like I said, you need uh, water being fed to the high pressure pump. So we're gonna turn that on now. And you can make this switch box however you want. You don't even really need it. You can just plug these things in. Um, but I'm gonna turn on the low pressure pump. I'm gonna ensure that my gauge uh, starts to build pressure, which tells me that uh, the high pressure pump is receiving sap. So I'm at 40 there. And it actually does push it through. So you can see there's sap coming out there. So right now the sap is just running through and it's coming out this port right here. So then, and you see there's no pressure. So then I'll turn on the high pressure pump. Again, you'll see there's no pressure because there's no resistance at this valve, it's wide open. So then I'll start closing the valve. And we're building pressure in the system which is forcing the sap through the membrane. Some sap still does flow past here, and that's the concentrated sap. So running about 200, and now we have pure water coming out of here, as you can see. Now it's going to take a second for it to start. There we go. Just had to push the air out of the lines. And there we go. That is how much water you don't have to boil, which is huge. So with this system, with a single membrane, I'm able to take approximately 100 liters per hour of water out of the sap. And uh, it's pretty self-sufficient. So it's not like an evaporator where you have to sit there and feed it wood and monitor it. It just does its thing. Um, and it's running off of electricity. So I've got a 220 plug here running the uh, 220 volt motor. And then just a standard house plug running the low pressure pump over there, the transfer pump. And I had my meter on this earlier and it's consuming approximately 2000 watts of electricity. So uh, considering the price of power these days, you're basically looking at around 40 cents per hour to run this system which is pretty cheap uh, considering uh, other fuel sources. We'll keep it around 200. So yeah guys, um, I made this cart. You can set up the system any way you like. I made this cart uh, just to, so it's super portable. I can wrap the cords up. I can take these two garden hoses off and this hose I can just wrap up and put in this bin. Uh, this bin here, is so that I can change this filter and it won't get any water on the uh, 240 volt pump. I just wanted to keep this whole system as tight as possible. In hindsight, you could have moved this over to here so when you open it, it doesn't get water on the pump, but it works for me. And I got just this rubber flat back here to make sure the water stays in the tub. Um, you're gonna wanna change this filter. These filters are like four or five bucks on Amazon change this filter every time you do a pretty big batch. So every about thousand liters or thousand liter batch, I change this filter. 
uh, just keeps, like I said, just keeps the RO membrane, you know, uh, running nice. Uh, so you just change that filter. You can get like a five pack, super cheap. Um, what else? That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you got any questions about my particular system, just leave them in the in the comments there, and I'll try my best to answer them. But that should give you a pretty good run through of how this thing works and how to build it. Uh, I'm not going to go through each individual like fitting and things like that uh, because everyone's system is going to be different. I mean, I tried to make mine as modular as possible so I can disconnect my water hoses or whatever as I need. And uh, literally at the end of the day, I can just pack this thing up, roll it away and put it somewhere where it's not going to freeze at night. Um, oh, I should mention. So at the end of a batch, let's say for the day, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you flush, um, I flush this whole tank of RO water, which is pure water, uh, through the outside of the membrane. So I use the low pressure pump, I hook this green hose to the tank, and I flush the membrane with pure water, but I don't close the valve, and I don't turn on the high pressure pump. I just let it run right through, and uh, so no water comes out of the RO membrane. It's just flushing past the outside of the membrane. Uh, so I run that about 50 gallons of the RO water through the system and that flushes it out uh, for that, you know, after you're done doing a batch. And then at the end of the season, uh, there's a, sort of a shutdown uh, process, I guess you could call it, where you can actually store the membrane. Um, and I will, take you through that process uh, when I do it at the end of the season. So that will be a separate video itself. So the actual shutdown storage um, of this, uh, basically you're just trying to preserve the membrane so you can use it for years. It's pretty easy to do, it's, but it's just one step uh, that I'm not gonna explain in this video. Um, so yeah guys, hopefully you enjoyed that. And like I said, just uh, let me know if you got any questions.